Hi guys, welcome to Drum Dog, and today we are talking about bass drum tuning. Now when it comes to approaching bass drum tuning, we kind of have to treat this differently to any other drum on the kit. Because I'm about to make a very, a very broad and sweeping statement that some of you guys may agree or disagree with. Um, I think for 90% of drummers, for the thumpy bass drum sound we're going for, we just want both heads to be tuned as low as possible that they're not wrinkling and rattling and the rest of the tuning is just down to the dampening we're using. So there's a lot less actual tuning involved with the bass drum, more just getting our heads seated correctly and tuned as low as possible that we're actually getting a pitch out of the head. Now obviously that is not going to go for everyone, even I have some other bass drums that I do tune up a little bit more to get a little bit more melodic tone out of them, but I really do think for most applications in modern music we're just looking for that punchy low end thump with high attack, we're just going to want to go for that low tuning, so that is what we are going to be checking out today. Now for today's video we are using this Yamaha Stage Custom 22 by 16 inch bass drum and we are starting with both heads removed in this virgin shell form and we're going to be starting from scratch. Obviously you don't have to take your bass drum down to this place but if you are having tuning issues sometimes it is nice just to pull the whole lot apart, give it a good clean over and just make sure we haven't got any issues at our fundamental starting point. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is set this guy down gently on a nice soft surface so we're not damaging the bearing edge and grab my batter head. That's the resonant side of the drum. Should we flip the drum over? That sounds like a great idea. And that is, in fact, a very good point to raise. If you do have a naked shell, make sure you fit your heads the right way around. Check out where your spurs are. We are going to want the mounting point for the spurs towards the resonant head, not the batter head. Otherwise, you're going to get both your heads tuned beautifully, put your spurs up and, and want to cry. <laughs> so let's not do that. Right, so here we go. Batter side up and... Today we are using this Evans EQ3 clear batter head and I'm going to be placing this guy on. Now as always, now is the time to line up your logo. Uh, doesn't make a sound difference at all, it just upsets me when it's not nice and square at the top of the bass drum. Only matters to you, but hey, these things matter. Right, and here we go. We have our hoop. Now some hoops do have a correct side to be against the head. This is one of those hoops. I don't know if you guys can see there, there is a very slight beveled edge on this side of the hoop. So it's got a little bit more clearance as to not be catching the head. So we've got a thinner contact side for the collar and then the other side of the hoop is full thickness and it has the full painted finish on it. So make sure you're putting your hoop on the right way and if you've got any marks where your bass drum pedal attaches, make sure they are at the bottom so they're not making the hoop ugly anywhere else. And at this point, let's grab our tension rods. Okay, so bass drums, most bass drums, are different to any other drum in the sense that we have got claws with our tension rods that are going over the top of the hoop. So all I'm gonna do at this point in time is put them all down and stick them on just a couple threads. So I'm not gonna be putting any tension at all, just enough that they won't pull out and they are all in place. Okay, so now we have all of our tension rods engaged a couple threads. I'm gonna be grabbing my key, and I love to use these keys with a little knurled top like that so I can put it on and just spin them down because that makes it a whole lot easier than grabbing the arms, trying to wind them around. We can just spin them down and that makes life so much quicker. So, at this point, I'm not giving the head any attention at all. Any attention? Any tension. I'm giving the head lots of attention. I'm not putting any tension on the head yet at all. So as you can see here, I'm just going to be winding this guy down until it just nearly, just nearly makes contact with the claw. And that's it. I'm leaving them there for now. So we've got a nice even starting point for everything. And then once they are all down, we're going to make sure our head's seated centrally before we put any tension on it at all. So now we're going to want to make sure that our head and hoop are both seated centrally around the whole bearing edge. So all I'm going to do is take two fingers and pop them in between the bearing edge and the hoop and just run it around in opposites and I'm feeling for the, the gap being the same 
all the way around. The last thing we want is this to be seated over one way and then even if we tension it evenly it's going to be pulling harder on one side than the other. So as long as that gap is even on both sides, on opposite sides all the way around, then our head is seated nice and centrally and it's time to start applying some tension. Now here's where I start treating the bass drum differently to any other drum because I'm not going to I'm not going to get this finger tight with a key. I'm going to take advantage of this gap of tension rod we have showing here. I'm going to take both my hands, I'm going to go to opposite lugs, and I'm going to turn it on that actual part of the tension rod and pretty much pull those down as tight as I can by hand. Because there's so little mechanical advantage we have on those, on those tension rods, and we've got such little grip on them, that I'm pretty much talking them down until my fingers start to slip on the tension rods. And it's a really great, quick, easy way to make sure you've got even tension at a finger tight level opposite sides of the drum head. So this is only an eight lug drum. I'm gonna to have to do that once, twice, pull them down as tight as I can on the tension rods, three times, and then four times. Then at that point, I'm going to have a quick double check to make sure he's still seated correctly and I didn't knock him while I was tensioning that up and that's feeling all good. Now we do need to grab our key and the first thing I'm going to do is press my finger into the middle of the drum and take note of where we have wrinkles. Now I'm hoping you guys can see that but I am pretty much seeing an even wrinkling all the way around the circumference of the drum there. So. What I'm going to do is apply in a star motion, the same as we would for any other drum. So we're starting here and then we're going to go to the opposite and then back one across, opposite, back one across, opposite, back one across until we end up on the one next to where we started. And I'm going to give it just a little tweak up. Now, while I'm tweaking this, I'm actually feeling how tight each lug feels on the key. The last thing you want to do is ignore how tight they feel and just give it a certain degrees turn. because. Some may not be tensioned perfectly evenly to others, but how tight they feel when we're doing them up gives us a pretty damn good idea of how tight that rod actually is. And like I said, we're aiming for the lowest possible tension here. We don't want much tension on it at all. So after those tweaks, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna press my finger in the middle and those wrinkles have definitely reduced, but they've not completely disappeared. So at this point, I'm gonna have a quick listen. I'm gonna be tapping next to each lug and see if the side where I'm seeing more wrinkles is actually a slightly lower pitch. Which is very difficult to hear on a bass drum because the, tent, the pitch is so low down, our ears aren't very good at picking those things out. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm hearing a slightly lower pitch over this side of the drum. So I am gonna just give him a push there and gently, just gently tweak up this side of our bass drum head until those wrinkles are looking a little less wrinkly. And that is pretty much gonna be it for now. I may give him a little tweak up. Oh yeah, I'm seeing more wrinkles over this side. This, this is the trick with this. We really have to be careful of the light that we're using and how it can affect how we're seeing wrinkles in certain areas. You really want kind of an even light across it and look across the surface of the drum to see where these wrinkles are appearing. And all I'm going to do is just gently press in the middle and tweak up until those wrinkles have disappeared. And at that point, we've reached our lowest possible tension. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with what we've got there. Let's flip over the drum and take a look at the resonant head. Now for the resonant head, I'm gonna be going through exactly the same process. The only thing that really changes here is if your head is ported, um, how the head can tune around that port and especially how it changes how we hear tapping next to those lugs. It can sound quite a lot different to an unported head, but it's not a big change. I'm gonna be going through the same thing, seating it correctly, making sure my hoop's the right way around and tuning it up to the lowest possible tension. So here we go.
Now, at this point, just before I'm, I'm putting some tension down in these tension rods, if your head isn't ported, or if you're planning on going for a very heavily dampened bass drum, now's the time to commit to your dampening. Uh, because once we've got this head on, the only way of adjusting what dampening we've got inside the bass drum is getting it through this porthole. So if you're planning on using a really big stiff pillow perhaps, now's the time to get it in there to save the risk of damaging this porthole while you're putting it in or out. For me, I'm gonna be using kind of a sensible amount of dampening on this, and we're gonna be checking out a couple dampening options today, so I'm just gonna do them up as is with nothing inside the drum for now. So there we have it, with our head seated, he's on there happy, and we're at our lowest possible tension where we've got a nice even note out of this and we're not getting any wrinkles. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do with both of our heads today, and the rest of our sound choice does come from the dampening we put in the drum. Dampening makes a massive difference to a bass drum on how short our note is, how controlled it is, and how much attack we have. So today we're gonna to be checking this guy out as a wide open sound with nothing at all, then we're going to be checking it out with a small pillow and then a medium sized pillow so we get an idea of how this can affect the drum and how much more focus we get with a bit of dampening. So there we have it, that is my method for a relatively quick and easy way to get our bass drum sounding nice and punchy and useful for modern music. I really hope this tutorial has been useful for you guys. If you want to check out more tuning tips as well as drum lessons, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we hope to see you again soon.